Good morning. Good morning. We have to do a show. Okay, fine. Oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> oh, I woke up like this. Me too. I woke up. I look so good. I'm so it's I'm so yeah. happy to be here. Oh, is that my breakfast over there? Is that my butler with my breakfast oh, over I, there? I, was, I, I think I think that's I think that's my breakfast. You can pass me my breakfast. My scrambled eggs. Okay, what is happening? I want the popcorn. Oh, you want the popcorn? <laughs> I didn't know. I want I want the popcorn. I don't know you I don't know how much. Sorry, I didn't know I you were actually it. I Thank thought you, you. were <laughs> doing a bit <laughs> i was literally I was like, like Give me my i was breakfast. literally like hey the butler is over there i don't know it's okay hey guys good morning los angeles welcome back to spitball and today we're doing something a little different um we're going to be kissing on the mouth i didn't agree to that and we're gonna be um hugging we are going to be lounging. We're getting cozy. It's it's your very first spitball sleepover today. Spitball sleepover. Spitball sleepover. We've gotten all cozy. We got our popcorn. We've got our pillows, our blankets. Um, every single sleepover is going to feature a different segment. And this time around, we asked you guys to send us things that you wanted advice on. Yeah. Um, and... We have got some really exciting stuff uh, to look through. Um, we're going to just take it one by one uh, and take turns picking out topics. Um, and we'll both uh, share our insight. Um, the preface that we'll give you is that we are not preaching um, that our words uh, or our opinions are the right thing necessarily this is just what we feel and uh what we've just kind of experienced in our 20 something lives i don't know i thought i i don't listen to what arasha said I, i'm always right oh my gosh yeah we just thought at the end of the month it's fun to wind down <laughs> talk with you guys and um get a little closer with the audience definitely this is y'all's chance to engage with us directly um and and hopefully get featured on the pod yeah if that's, if that's something than you want a lot of a lot of you guys wrote in so advice right we all ask for it we all give it I hardly ever follow it and I think you guys had a lot of really valuable things oh watch this okay what, what are you gonna say about that one well I was saving that for next okay okay you redeemed yourself exactly you redeemed yourself um, for those of you that didn't uh, get to see Rowan just threw popcorn up in the air and put it in their mouth. Yeah, it's awesome. Which is a cool trick. Thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, audio listeners. Thanks. So we got some stuff lined up. I think we just dive right into it. I want to talk about um, uh, the stuff that you guys wrote, okay? Okay, yeah, I'm excited too. Let's go for it. Okay, should I go for it? Should you want to do one first? Let's or do rock, I grab paper, one? scissors. You know how this goes. Okay, but you already told me your trick. Okay, here's my trick. Okay, here's my trick. Okay, ready? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do, do rock. Paper. You bitch. <laughs> rock, <laughs> paper, scissors, <laughs> shoot. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so I won. Yes, that's you. Then you pick. Uh, you pick what we're going to be advising about. All right, let's do it. Um, we have lots of good stuff here. Lots of good stuff. Pulling it from the archives here on my phone. This popcorn is so good. It is good. Casey made it like like right on the stove, like a beautiful housewife. Mm. Um, okay, let's start this off strong. Okay. How to get laid. <laughs> Which I know a ton about. I, I know. Yeah? I, I know. I wouldn't say I know a ton, but I know. Yeah? I and know, what would I you know. have to say? How do you get laid? How to get laid? How to get laid? Um, I think be open. Like take your shirt off? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, was... I think I think being open in all different ways will help you get laid. Um, and I'm gonna I, I, something is drawing me to keeping it vague. Um, usually, I I care a lot about advice, and I and I usually hone in on a lot and and provide examples and stories about everything that I have to say. But something is telling me to just advise to be open. Okay. I would say how to get laid 
it's different contexts, right? Like if you're going out into the world, if you're going out to the bar that night because you want to have sex with someone, like that's your own journey. And I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know that I've ever actually like left and been like, I'm going to have sex with a stranger tonight. I mean, maybe I have, that but one of us. I would say, <laughs> I would have to say if you're actually looking to achieve some kind of sexual intimacy with someone that you like, be respectful and be intentional and be clear with um, your feelings. That's a good one. And have a big dick and balls. Yep. Uh, definitely, uh, you, you might not need all those things, but <laughs> one of the first things I would say, uh, after being open is to be clear. Yeah. That is really, really important. I have a feeling that a lot of this advice that we're going to be giving is going to be about communicating. Yep. Um, and being empathetic. And fucking. Because we love doing those, all three. I would agree. I would um, also say with, on the topic of how to get laid. Yeah. Be intentional, be respectful and listen to uh, the other person and their consent. Always ask for consent. Yeah, yeah. And ask then once, once it happens once, it's just a ripple effect from there. Asking for consent is hot. I know people say that all the time, but it actually is. No, Be I'm, I actually am into that. It, no, me too. I love when- <laughs> No, 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 like I'm into that. <laughs> no, no, I'm into that. I love when they no, ask. No, I actually am into it right now just talking about it. <laughs> no, me too. I'm, no, I'm turned I'm, I have a boner. Yeah. No, but genuinely, do. it's so hot when you're like, you're laying with someone and they're like, it's like, clearly I want you to like literally ravage me right now. But when someone's like, can I, can I do this? Stop. Can I do this to you? And I'm literally like- <laughs> I'm heating up. I'm heating up. I love like a like a like a whispering like is this okay? Oh. Me too. Oh my god. It's it is like steaming hot in here right now. <laughs> I, I actually I feel am that all too. Of a sudden very Me too. Warm. Me too. I need to go out. I need to get out. Is there I a fire? <laughs> no, genuinely ask for consent, not only because it's the right thing to do because it, it's fucking hot. It's sexy. Like everybody just it just it genuinely like it feels like you're just being taken care of and like you're safe. Yeah. And safety is sexy. 1000%. So that's how to get laid. That's how that's to get laid. One Best one. of luck to you, my friend. Yeah. Raji, really. you pick one out. Okay. I was so excited going through um, these because I just was like already picking out what I wanted to say. But then I was like, no, I, I don't want to think about it. Okay. This is good. What do you do if you feel stuck in a rut or, at a, or are at a loss? Ooh. This one is huge. Yeah. What do you have to say? I would say... Me personally, when I feel stuck in a rut, I am a creature of routine. So when I am stuck in a rut, I like to wake up with a day that's structured. I know what I'm doing next. I know my my given things that I do, like my, my wake up skincare. Maybe you go to a morning workout class um, and I know like everyone always says like this, but like, like journal, like do things that are good for you. Have a routine. Um, that's what always helps me because I start to like freak when I'm not being productive. Mm. And that's when I feel like I'm in a rut is like, if I feel like I'm standing, so I'm not doing anything. So I think that if you can solidify a routine, you can um, make it a routine that prioritizes, prioritizes your well being, then you're, you're golden. Yeah. I, I completely agree with all of that stuff. Um, and, and I would, say similarly um something i thoroughly believe in is growth through reflection so that's why i think yeah obviously journaling is so 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 important but it's so often ridiculed like i just i just think it's so easy to be like oh yeah like i've tried journaling or i've done this i've done that and i just i think it's used often as an umbrella term like to journal but I think you can find what you like best about it. Like me specifically, I am a planner and I love being organized with things. So I find it really helpful not to necessarily journal about my feelings, but to organize my thoughts. Totally. If that makes sense. Like just genuinely sectioning off things that I feel. Maybe it's like a pro con list or it's just like these are the emotions that I feel. I, I like having a little bit more structure when it comes to my reflecting. Um, so if, if I'm speaking specifically, if I, uh, faced a loss, if I had just something that I was like, ah, this sucks. Like that is the first thing that I would do is I think somewhat write it down in a visual layout. Um, that just kind of shows me like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. These are the issues. And it just feels suddenly a lot less because it's not in here anymore and it's just out there. 
So true. Um, do you want to know my favorite form of journaling that I actually, I, cause a lot of times I've found journaling to be very overwhelming. Cause like when I journal, I, I, it's like, I'm doing it for someone else. Like I'm mm. literally like, hi, like blah, 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 blah. Like when it's really just like, you, it's, it should be used as a form of, uh, getting, you know, expressing yourself, getting it out. Yeah. So my favorite form of journaling I've ever done was, um, in, uh, what is it called? The Oh, the artist way. They talk about morning mm. words. And essentially it's like you wake up and you just write for three pages straight. And you don't, it's not even like cohesive. It's just like sit, write everything that comes to your mind. Like you can literally be like, I had a dream about dinosaurs and I need to get eggs from the store today. And I woke up and I miss my ex, but I miss my mom too. And I, but, but like, it's whoa, whoa, whoa. like get everything yeah. out. And then like you start your day like, okay, now that's out of there. I like that. I think that's really good. Um, I think I told you what I started this year was the five minute journal, yeah. um, which I have been loving again, like in its simplest form, it's not overwhelming. It's good to have the consistency with the routine. Um, and I think I also told you that I did this a couple times is whenever I didn't feel like writing things down, um, I would just open my phone and I would talk. Mm -hmm. And it was just a voice memo. Yeah. Um, and I loved that because sometimes I feel like my hands can't keep up mm -hmm. with my thoughts and I'm just like planning them out because my hands are so slow. But when I'm voice memoing, I'm able to just be like, and I just think like this. Yeah. Or do I? <laughs> and it just it just feels like a little bit more of like real time reflection. And 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 also I love that you said that you feel like sometimes you're writing it for somebody else, because I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, it's like no one else is going to see this. Don't just, yeah. like say what you mean. It, right. Like you don't have to put up any facade or, or censor yourself. But it's so, so easy to feel like that. So I think personally, the voice memos made me feel so private, so secure. I didn't think anybody was going to get into those. So I, I liked it. And then you can also just delete it when you're done. Exactly. But I, I listened to it back and I felt like it actually helped me like make some realizations. Nice. Yeah. I like that. So I'm sorry to whoever's in a, whoever's in a rut. You'll get out of it. Trust me. That's the thing about ruts. They're temporary. You'll be fine. It's all time. Truly. Every, time heals all. That's something that people used to always say to me and I'd be like, no, it does it. And it does. It really does. It does. It truly does. It does. Um, okay. This one hits hard says how to get over an ex who never prioritized you woman loving woman edition but this goes for everybody because i think we've all been there before having relationships with people who didn't prioritize and i'll tell you what one of my favorite pieces of advice that i've ever heard i don't always follow it but i do like it it rings true is never prioritize somebody who views you as an option mm. yeah yeah i this this is this is really, yeah, this is hard to hear for sure. Like, it sounds like a really bad situation. Um, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I would wrote, hate to be you. I wrote it. <laughs> I literally wrote it. No, I'm just kidding. Could have though. Um, it's, it's, that's, it's tricky, you know? Again, like, the first thing that I want to say and put out there as advice to anybody who is in a relationship um, especially if you're young or it's like an early on experience. Like I have always said, like, you know, it's very easy to sometimes toss the word like toxic and manipulative out there because yes, sometimes that is the case and safety first, of course, within all of that. But other times it's like, okay, but at the same time, we're all just kind of trying to figure out how to love people. Yeah. And, and I say that because sometimes we, like you are the one that's toxic in a relationship totally. um, a lot of the times. And, and it's, it's important to recognize and be aware of that. And it does not have to be like, Oh my God, I'm a mess. I'm a terrible person. Again, you're just trying to figure out how to navigate relationships and love. And that's really tricky sometimes. Um, however, making conscious actually toxic decisions in relationships is also a very real thing and, and really, really harmful. Um, and, uh, it sounds like in this situation, it, it might be two people who are on different pages of what they mean to each other. 
Um, and, and again, that goes back to our first piece of advice, right? To be clear, to be intentional and be like, this is what I want out of this relationship. And this is what I put first versus this is what I put first versus this is how much I can give you back and forth and yada, yada, yada. Because if you're not on the same page, then you get this case, right? Somebody yeah. who is ready to pour so much into another person's cup and somebody who's like, actually, I'm not quite there or I'm yeah. not going to be doing that because I'm focused on this. It's a hard lesson to learn. I mean, and we don't know like the, the, in the ins and outs of this person's relationship, but, um, it's really, it really sucks. We talk about this a lot. You and I about chemistry versus compatibility. A lot of times you can have really intense chemistry with somebody, but you're just not compatible or whatnot. And like, I, I don't know the ends of this person's relationship, but like, maybe they like, you know, maybe they were being love bombed or whatever, but you know, you're asking how to get over an ex and that's really hard. I mean, I certainly, it's, it's a journey that I think is different for everybody. My piece of advice is like, stop looking at what they're doing. Like, oh, yeah. stop looking at what they're doing. Oh my gosh. Like, I think, I, I think, you know, I do believe that there is a world where like exes can get along and be civil, especially in the like, uh, like an LGBT community. It feels like something that happens a lot. Um, but I would say, I think when you break up with someone, especially someone that you, has hurt you by not prioritizing you or whatever, it's like you gotta, you have to protect your peace and be on your own for a while and like not look at what they're doing. I think social media is this really cr toxic crystal ball into seeing what everyone's doing all the time. And if you have full access to seeing somebody that like, you know, triggers you because you're going through something, it can be like really upsetting. And just because you're not looking at what they're doing, it doesn't mean it has to be like, hard feelings. I always like the saying too, when people say like, I still want to see you eat, just not at my table. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I completely agree. I have told so many friends this in the past and, and a lot of friends have been, uh, like really hesitant or, or scared or reluctant to do so. But number one thing is to cut them off. It's um, tough. Yeah. Not permanently. Like you do not have to never talk to them ever again in your life because that's obviously a really scary thing to hear when you have just been attached to this person. But just right now, it needs to be like a no contact kind of space. Yeah, um, that's sucks. that's just the best advice that I could give. Um, and uh, it's it's it it just feels like it's much harder because it's like an out of sight, out of mind thing. Yeah, if they are not in your world, like your subconscious is going to learn that life goes on without them. It's also really hard to like, you know, when you've been dating somebody or whatnot, it feels routine to see what they're doing every day and talk to them and whatever. Like, I, you know, it's sometimes you break off relationships and it's hard because you're like, I don't know what my day looks like without you. And that's really hard. But the thing is, is that habits form over like, uh, you know, however long it takes a habit to form or whatever, yes. like 14, 18 yes. days or something like that. And you will be okay. Like, it's really hard to like think, oh, I can't picture this person not in my, my picture. But I think it's I think it's 21 days. Yeah, I think so. It's like three solid weeks for a habit to form. And I, like, I remember practicing that myself, like three full weeks, no contact with an ex, like having that much space. And I just remember on the other end being like completely different, just yeah. actually feeling like, wait, I'm actually so disconnected. Like it's you find yourself again, not pining to hear from this person, not thinking about them because you are adding different things to your plate that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. And, and then the sun still goes up and you're like, wait, life is happening. The world is still rotating. Like it's all still occurring and I don't have to cling to this person for it all to be okay. Yeah. Um, but again, that's just what you have to figure out when you're in it. So it's again, another situation of time and, and understanding um, that you won't be in that place forever. And I'll say this, this person already answered their own question. They said, how do you get over an ex who doesn't prioritize you? Get over it. They don't fucking prioritize you. Then don't, don't worry about them. Prioritize yourself. Yeah. Like if you don't, don't put energy into people that aren't prioritizing you. Listen, it's a lesson I'm learning constantly all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, and it's hard, but you know, also listen, if people tell you one thing through their words or actions and you choose to be like, no, it'll change. It probably won't. Yeah. So yeah. 
people are telling you how they feel about you right to your face. Always so you offers. know. Um, and, and yeah, that's a big one actually is, is to just focus and hone in on self care and self love. Literally a breakup is the best time to do all of that. Like get hot, like literally go like exercise, do what makes you feel good. Like this is your time to like glow up and focus on you. Like nail down that skincare routine. Like you have nobody else to focus on, but yourself right now do that. Truly. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And you'll be surprised how magnetic you become when all you're doing is care. Like once you'll, you'll be surprised. Yeah. Okay. That was heavy. That was heavy. Let's do, uh, let's do a little less heavy. I got a good one. Okay. How do I slay all day? I think there's more to that one. Okay, well, I was trying to be humble, but... Don't yeah, be, don't the, be. The whole question is, how do I slay all day like y'all? Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. How do you slay all day, Rasha? Um, be kind. <laughs> Truly, like, that's so lame, but that is just the first thing I have to put out there. Like, it's such a slay to be a kind person. That's, it sounds so lame, but if you go up to somebody and like, just versus like, like, hi, versus like, hi, like you just change somebody's day. So true. I just, I just think that's a major slay. Every time I come across a nice person, I'm just like, and they walk away. I'm like, oh, queen. Yeah. And when you come across a like mean person with bad vibes, you remember them all day. You remember them forever. Cause you're like, yeah, person hor- horrible vibes. I had a horrible experience with somebody when I was parallel parking recently and they yelled at me and I haven't stopped wishing um, bad things upon them since. Don't get me started on drivers. Yeah. They're, it's they're not slang all day. No, I do think slang comes from the inside. Yes. Truly. It truly does. I think there is nothing more attractive and more slay than good energy and to have good energy. It's like, we were just talking about, you got to put yourself first. You got to be kind to others and you got to like, there's, such a fine line between being kind to others, but also not letting one fuck with you. Yes. Yes. Still, still advocating for yourself. Um, and, and I would say if that's on the inside, on the outside, you fit. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I've been really digging into fashion these past couple months and I want to just continue on with that. Um, but I feel like if you're I used to say this in high school. If you look good, you feel good. It's true. Like put on just an outfit that you feel so good about. My, I'm going to expose myself and say what my uh, process is. Okay. Is I will like find like one piece of clothing in my closet that I want to wear tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's pants, a shirt, a scarf, socks, literally anything. And then I'll go on my Pinterest. I'm still on there. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a Raja in a big empty room, Pinterest. Um, I'm on it too, don't worry. Thank you. And I will search like that outfit. So it'll be like white t-shirt outfit or like Aww. blue jeans outfit. And then I literally just scroll through until I find something that I think I can like recreate with some of my layers. And I'm like, oh, I'm really excited to wear that. And then I put it all together like the night before. And that morning, I'm so excited to wear that outfit that you cannot help but feel slay. Like, you're just like, oh, I I look so good. I'm like radiating that again. It's like magnetic. Yeah, I think a good outfit really adds confidence. Huge. And it it totally, you carry yourself different when you feel good, you look good. Yeah. I feel that too. I love a good outfit. And I don't think there's like, here's the thing is that people will get real snobby about dressing. Somebody commented on a TikTok of mine recently and they were like, you can't dress for shit. And I was like, there's like no wrong, not first of all, I don't care, but yeah. um, there's no wrong way to dress. Just put clothes on. And if that's an expression of who you are, you look great. Yes. And try new, try new things. Like do something bold. If you're like questioning it, like, you know, maybe try it the next week. Like just genuinely, like I, I think your clothes can be such an avenue for your confidence. Um, and that's all that slang is, is just literally walking around and knowing that you're that bitch. Right. This person comments, they're like, I meant how to like murder <laughs> slay. Well, no, uh, we're not going to help you with that this time. Yeah. Could never. All right. Let's see. Oh okay, yeah. It's your turn. There's a good one. Okay. Uh, oh, how do I stop giving a fuck? Thoughts? There's, there's a, (laughs) 
Oh. <laughs> you know, this is this is actually so, so big. Again, another really important lesson I think I learned is that literally life is so much easier when you don't care that much. True. And there's a really big asterisk next to that because obviously care so much about the wonderful things. Care about your friends, your family, yourself, your health, all that. But everything else, don't care. Yeah. Like, what does that have to do with me? Why, why are there other things going on that I am so concerned with that have nothing to do with me? Yeah, I think, um, you know, people talk about how therapists will say, like, ask yourself this question. Is it in your control? Yes or no? If the answer is no, don't fucking care. That's it. That's it. Like it is what it is kind of kind of motto, like the attitude of just like things are happening and I need to just loosen the control and let it go. Now, now, how do you let it go and lose control Uh, that it's it's kind of like one of those lessons that I feel like you have to come into on your own. You know, you have to make the conscious decision to want to live that kind of lifestyle like uh, you have to you have to be an optimist. You have to you have to be grateful and just kind of look at life in a different way. I think. Yeah, I, I certainly I get worked up too, and I wonder how to give a fuck or not give a fuck um, because I like to be I like to control things. I like to think that I can be in control of things. I like to think that I can control not like in a manipulative sense, but like oftentimes I think like I try to I don't, I'm trying to find like a good way to say I love controlling people <laughs> but I don't it's not what I mean like right. I just mean that a lot of times like maybe someone will tell me one thing and I'll be like cool but I bet I, I bet I can change your mind which mm. is toxic probably in some capacity interesting but I, I don't mean it like in like a bad way god now I sound like an asshole no, but don't. like it is just like letting go of pa- that need for control understanding that no matter what your you know spirituality or lack thereof is it's like some there is a plan somewhere yeah and things go according to plan and it's really devastating I think when you do give a fuck so much about something and it doesn't go how you wish it did because it's so easy to just like get really upset about it but at the end of the day you have to like circle back to like do I have control over this yes or no no okay yeah I I can't and and there is nothing that benefits from overthinking replaying things and um you know just spending too much energy on things that are already out the window I think an important thing to remember again it all goes back to time we have nothing but this present moment. Literally, no. I, I'm, my New Year's resolution is to stop saying literally, so I'm not saying that anymore. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, truly. And now I forgot what I was going to say. We have nothing but this present moment. We have nothing but this present moment. Nothing else exists, truly. Like, the past is already gone. The future, yeah, like, we're hoping that it comes, but, like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. You actually do not know what is happening any minute that's past the exact moment right now. (laughs) So I think remembering (laughs) that hopefully provides comfort. (laughs) Hopefully just kind of lets you calm down for a second and think, why am I caring about anything else? The only thing that you truly can control is the moment right now. And I would like to circle back to when I said that I love to control people. I don't, I didn't mean that. You asshole. I didn't mean that. I just meant that like, I like to think like sometimes I can like persuade, but I I think once you release yourself from the idea that you do have control over others and their emotions and their behavior, Mm -hmm. it's like, you don't have that. So don't even worry about it. Another quote I like is don't trip, don't trip over what's already behind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you're just getting in your own way. And and actually, I think it's a really common thing. I, I, I think a lot of people would say that they sometimes are controlling. It's a very common thing. It, it It's like a type A almost. Um, it's, it's usually the planner, right? The organizer, the person who's like, wait, but I don't know what's happening. So I need to, I need an itinerary or I need to plan it out. You've met my mom. <laughs> 
I have met your mom. What do you have to say about her? I love my mom. She's a really nice, good lady. Strong, too. You were going to say bad things about her, you asshole. No, I wasn't. Don't say that. Sally. What's next for you, girl? Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, okay. This is is a little bit of a different vibe, so I think it'll be good. Um, New father here. What practical skills do you think a child of this generation needs? Whoa. I really liked this question. Riz? Um, Swag? (laughs) A uh, Fortnite victory royale yacht. This is a new father, Rowan. He doesn't know those things. Uh, well, well or actually, it sounds like he's got a lot of riz. Yeah, because in jizz. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, congratulations um, to yeah. fatherhood. And on your baby and stuff. Yeah, that's that's... That sounded so ingenuine. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on your baby. But I truly mean it. Um, that's that's very very exciting. Can and, I hold your baby? Uh, I'm sure that's very that's very terrifying to be like, oh god, what do I teach this this child? And to feel like the fate of the next generation lies in your hands. What are you? I think maybe better question is what to not teach your child. And I'm gonna start with math. Don't need it. I, I, I'm not listening to what you're saying. What are you doing? Don't math. And also don't... Um, do people ride bikes anymore? I like riding bikes. Okay, Rowan's teddy bear is smelling <laughs> her hair. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, people ride bikes. Okay. I, I, I like I, I like bikes. We should go for a bike ride. I have a bike. I can ride my bike with no handlebars. No, this father works. has gotten zero concrete advice from us. <laughs> what would what would you say to daddy? <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, listen here, daddy. Um, <laughs> I think I think uh, reading would be a great thing uh, for your child to read. I mean, <laughs> oh god. I think. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we're literally like, um, um, advice on um, 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 growing up. Okay, no, I've got it. I've got it. I think re- decision making. <laughs> oh, okay. Decision making. That's a, is that a practical skill? Yeah. No, it's not. Practical skill is like bike riding. No, practical skill is like that. I haven't eaten today and I feel like I, I Okay, I think it's I think it's that we haven't eaten. No, I know. I was just sitting here thinking that like literally and my brain cells are pouring out of my ears and like you're talking and I'm literally like <gasps> I thought we were gonna get tacos. I oh my god, I forgot about the tacos. We we'll get busy. tacos. We'll get tacos after. So if and if that's it, and good luck on your baby. Yep. What's the next question? Oh god, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Daddy. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would say teach your baby to change their own diaper so you don't have to do it. No. Okay. We got it. We got to give this new father at least something concrete. Um, okay. Practical skills for the new generation. You're, you're really done with him. No, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to think. I was like, he wants advice, not something you make a sidewalk with. (laughs) (laughs) Concrete. Really, really bad. Really, really bad. Um, listen, just, uh, you know, really care for this kid and <laughs> ask them what they want to learn. <laughs> I feel like I'm bleeding. <laughs> Why was this the question that, like, made us, like... <laughs> it this, literally broke this us. Is- <laughs> I don't know what happened. We were so eloquent. I'm literally about to be... Yeah, literally, we're like... (laughs) And there's no moment like... There's no moment like the present. So live every day like it's your last. And and he's like, what should I say to my baby? And we're like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't... What are are practical skills? (laughs) What are practical skills? (laughs) Like... Um, I wish that I had learned. I okay, reading, you want to talk about something? I thought reading was one. Do you? Do you, <laughs> do you see these people on TikTok who are teaching like their little like one and a half year olds to like use knives and cook? I'm like, okay, that's a practical skill, I think. Sure, but leave the baby out of the kitchen. Yeah, sure. They shouldn't be handling knives, but like, maybe like I know they're dull. Maybe knives. like mixing. Yeah. <laughs> 
How, did you ever go to one of those places when you were growing up where they did, it was like job simulations center and like you did? Yeah. And it's like, you would go and like, you could be like a gas station clerk and you would like, it was like a play place and you could like do the gas and then you could like work at a restaurant and sneeze. <laughs> Bless you. You're allergic to your childhood. No, that's actually, that hits. That <laughs> I'm sorry, hits. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, um, anyways, all right, let's just move on. This I, new father is going to hate us. I hope my brother's not watching because I'm about to be an aunt at the end of, um, well, I guess soon, really soon. And uh, I feel like I'm going to meet the baby and be like, what's up? <laughs> what's up? No, oh my God, that is so Do you exciting. vape? <laughs> Pass the jewel to the baby. I know you just got here, but did you like jewel or what? <laughs> That's great. Um, um, we'll we'll come up with advice. We we owe the daddy something. <laughs> Bless you. Just okay. Sweet. Bless you. Bless you. I'm wearing your robe. I f I smell Bessie. I think. Oh wait, are you allergic to cats? I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie is a dog, but I am allergic to cats and dander in general. So you're allergic to cats and dogs? No, I guess. What's dan? What's <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of you. I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> I am allergic to cats. Okay, all right. I got I got one that hopefully will be um, Riz helpful. Riztastic. Okay, no, this is this is a different vibe. Well, we went on a different vibe and it failed last time, so we're gonna go on a different vibe again. <laughs> that guy is literally watching right now, and he's watching us answer his question. He's like. <laughs> Gee, thanks. He's like, literally, the house is on fire. He just had this baby, and he's like, I need help. And we're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any babies. Wait, didn't I just ask the father question? Yeah, but I, I you do it. You All got right. it. This is good. This is good. This is good. I graduate college soon. How do I manage having friends without the structure and help of school? Oh, that's a good question. Very good question, because we're right out of college. Right, and, well, I guess I have to ask first, are you, like, cool and hot? Should, Obviously. Should be easy. They are. I'm kidding. Because they watch spitball. Everyone who watches spitball is cool and hot, and your exterior doesn't define your value. But you are cool and hot. Love you. Um, please. I think, what was the question again? Oh yeah, how to be a dad? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, listen. Let me first validate you and say that that is such a big issue for so many people is uh, finding structure um, after college because all of all your life you have basically been. Um, in line with everybody else around you that's your age. Um, in elementary school, in middle school, in high school, even in college, you're not supposed to be doing anything other than being in the grade that you're in. But then once you uh, graduate from college, you see everybody around you who is the same age as you, but everybody's in different stage, a different stage of their life. Somebody is buying a house, uh, somebody is having kids, somebody is like getting a promotion, somebody is like still at home in their hometown, like somebody is just studying abroad and has been traveling, like everybody is just all over the map. Mm -hmm. And then you're all of a sudden like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Right. And no one knows what they're doing, actually. Right. Right. That's all fake. Um, yeah, but you, but you end up, you end up questioning, like if you're, uh, right again, like if you're stuck or if you, uh, are just in a place of where you've gone, not even stuck, but backward. Was part, part of that question was how to make friends, right? Yes. How to make friends like inside or rather now that you don't have the structure of school and, and, what not. I think it's important that um, I think a good way to make friends in any case is to get involved with hobbies and things that you like. Um, you know, like for me, a ton of my closest friends come from like acting classes here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and even like friends from like the yoga studio I go to. And of course, like you'll probably like get a job and um, like have coworkers that you get along with and stuff. So I think just like doing a lot of like getting out there and doing activities in which you would like meet people that you get along with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, one of my friends did this when she moved to a new place and I just thought it was so bold and brave and great. Um, 
on Bumble on I the dating app. That. Yeah, there's a Bumble BFF, mm-hmm. um, which is basically like using the app to find friends. And it sounds weird and maybe lame. Like, I, I don't know. I at first was like, I would never do that. But this friend like told me that she did that. And I was like, wait, I respect that so much. I think that's just so... Uh, like talk about taking control. Like you're just like, I'm trying to find friends and you just find people who you like connect with. And literally some of her closest friends are from there, which I think is great. I know somebody who used to work for a service where people could go online and buy and pay for somebody to hang out with them for like an undisclosed amount of time. Damn. That's different obviously. And was really sad. And so weird. you're advising people to pay for friends. I'm not saying that, but it does exist. And I remember my friend who did it, they'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm making like a hundred dollars today because I'm hanging out with someone in downtown. And I'm like, you're going to die. I think. Well, what if it's like, if the person sucks, then it's like that. That's like babysitting. Yeah, we're really hating on babies. This episode. <laughs> <laughs> the person sucks. They're probably like a that, they're probably like that a new, new dad's dad. baby. <laughs> I was so excited about that question too. I was like, this is gonna be so great. We're gonna cover a whole new demographic. <laughs> <laughs> the question said, "What's a practical skill?" And we went, "Um, um, we were like, um, I don't know. Have you read anything?" <laughs> <laughs> can the baby read yet oh i don't know that's probably it um, uh all right best of luck making friends and i think don't be afraid to put yourself out there and uh you know find common ground with people and here here's the thing too um especially young adults that are watching right now and and going further off in, into their life just don't be afraid of rejection it's everywhere people are going to reject you and it's hardly ever personal totally except totally. for when it is just just connect with the people around you um share your experiences hear them and and i think uh i'm a big believer in friendship soulmates i think they're just scattered all around you um and uh i always tell rowan um that we were meant to meet um, Hi. and I, I, I genuinely think you, <laughs> get out of my shot. Sorry. I'm sorry. Did I just hurt you right then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I genuinely do believe in that. Uh, you'll just meet people who they just talk like you do and they laugh at the same stuff as you do and they just fit right into your friend group. And again, that's like literally what happened with us. Um, r- like genuinely, I want everyone to know, like r- I moved to LA like two years ago and Rowan is somebody that I met in LA um and is one of my best friends so like you you will hold on to your friends from college and friends and friends from high school and the ones that you'll go on to meet and whatnot but like something special that I love about our friendship is that you are a friend that I made out here when I moved without the structure and stuff like that like we just found each other so true do we kiss yet do you want to? <gasps> no, I'm too scared. Okay, I didn't like the way that you just shrugged at that. No, because you made me nervous. Oh. No, I went. It was a not. It wasn't a, a bad shrug. Thanks for saying that. I agree. Okay, well now it looks like I just got rejected. No, get used to it. See, that's what I said. It's that's it, everywhere. I expect right. the unexpected. All right. I just didn't expect you to do that. Fine. We don't have to kiss. Let's move on. Next piece of advice. Okay. Love you. Um, okay, here's a good one. Should I move in with a friend I previously had feelings for? Shit. That was my last one that I was going to use. Shit. Well, let's just still ask it. Should I move in with a friend that I don't feel good about? <laughs> what was the end of it? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Should I move in with a friend that I don't feel good about? Um, No. <laughs> and moving on moving on next no, question should I move in with a friend I had previous feelings for um I'm gonna go with probably not I'm gonna go with maybe okay we need more context we need more context yeah like um are are you guys living with somebody else as well How, do you still feel that way about them or are, are either of you guys in relationships um, yeah, how deep was it? Because I, I have friendships with people that I had like a little crush on before. And I got over it. I've said this many times. I fall in love with my friends all the time. I just, for me, the line is just 
it, the line is just thin for me. Yeah. I think some people really separate the categories in their lives where they're like, these are my friends and I, I don't do that with my friends. And then they're like, and these are my lovers and those are the people that that. And I just don't, I just don't understand that because... If I am your friend, it's because I think that you're admirable and inspirational and awesome and, and you know, fun and cool. And so I just don't know why I wouldn't want somebody who I would date to also have all those qualities. So uh, yeah. I just feel like, you know, again, attraction is a huge part of it, definitely. So uh, that that is a is a thing that I am acknowledging. But I just think personally personality is so much for me that I end up just feeling attracted to people who have cool personalities. I'm 1000% friends to lovers thousand for this person though. Like it really is. We'd have to know, like, do you still like this person? How, how fiery was your romance? Um, because I, I don't know, like I said, I have a couple people that come to mind that I had crushes on that now like we're just homies and like I don't look at them that way. And if right. that's the situation that you're in, then sure. Go for it. Um, but if you're like, no, I had feelings for them, I still do. And like, because then you got to start thinking about like, what if they bring somebody home? What if they start dating right. someone? And that's in your house. I'm so, so like, I'm so particular about like what goes on in my house and who is near me and the energy that comes in and out and shit. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you're just, you're just going to be hurting yourself. Like that's, that's a little bit of self-sabotage. Yeah. Um, Do you guys share a wall? Cause yeah. Be and tough. I, I just, I just worry too, that there would be some hope that like something would kindle because you guys would be under the same roof. And that's just not necessarily guaranteed. So you don't, you just don't want to hurt yourself. Um, but again, like if that's your only option and if it's like, no, but it would be a really sweet deal and I don't feel anything anymore. Go for it. I trust you. What I'll say about it too is certainly don't move in with them because you have feelings oh, oh, and yeah. think that that's going to go somewhere because then you're like on a lease together and that's weird. And also if you still like them, think about like if you poop or something and they smell it in the house. Oh, my poops are smelly. Yeah. I'll say it. He's like, mine too. I don't think he poops, Ro. Look, he's got a whole zipper in the back. That's a okay, poop sack. You just zipped his butt crack down. I did. On live television. Live television here with Andy Cohen and Anderson <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> That's uh, us. All right, should we spitball since you stole my question? Yes. Okay, my spitballing with Teddy. Um, do you want to hold them? Sure. Sure. Hey. Hey. I just held them like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I am in Tokyo. All right, so for our spitball, uh, I thought we would do some advice for ourselves. I think so. Why'd you take him back? You were freaking me out the way you were holding him. Fine. I like to hold him like this. <laughs> so I guess your word means nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, so I thought we'd spitball words of advice that we wish we had received earlier slash advice we would give to our younger selves. Sure. So no, we can't do it anymore. But if you if you would imagine some advice that you could have used when you were younger. I think I said it earlier kind of about um, like time heals all because I know that I, I still am like don't know that I firmly believe that, but it certainly does help. <laughs> um, I remember vividly when I was in high school, like when things like certain things like drama with other girls and and crushes and everything felt like the end of the world. Like it was like I can't imagine. And I actually remember I used to like talk to my older cousin about this, and she would kind of she was much, you know she's older than me and wiser, and she would be like. You'll like, you know, it feels really intense right now, but one day it won't. And mm. um, I just remember thinking when I was younger, like, no, I can't imagine ne never stressing out about something like this or whatever. But it is the truth. Like things that you care about right now, you'll look back and be like, oh, I don't fucking care about that at all. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, you and I really do think people tell you like when you get older, you stop caring what people think as much and you like all these things happen um, and I don't know, for a long time, I was like, that's not going to happen to me. I'm always going to be like this. And literally I grew up and I'm like, I actually don't care about this, that and whatever. But like, 
me five years ago, me even me a year ago would literally be like, really? Such a universal experience to, I, I think I was just talking about it with somebody in terms of like <laughs> parenting. <laughs> Sorry. So this we come back round circle to the to the new dad um, because something I was talking to other people about was the common like you know your parents being like oh when you're a mother you'll understand <laughs> oh yeah right I got that all the time um, and and genuinely it it's like kind of. Mm-hmm. Like you, you as a, as a kid, you're looking and you only have the perspective of your mother and your father, um, or whatever your case is, you're just looking at your guardians and that's all you see them as is your guardian, but you don't see them as their own person, their own human, their own perspective, life experiences, a whole a whole number of years before you even came into the picture. Oh my God. Um, I forget about that. It's, it's so easy to forget. Right. And, and so because of that, you're living a life, uh, kind of just thinking everything is revolving around you or, or maybe you might grow up feeling entitled. You might grow up feeling, uh, safe or, or the opposite. If you're not growing up in a caring environment and it isn't until you reach a certain age that you're able to become self-aware like that that kind of stuff is just a little inevitable too and have for and have compassion for um why people are the way they are Mm. especially your parents and stuff I mean I used to always be like my mom would say something and I'd be like oh I'm not gonna be like that when I'm older and then now I like look at it I'm literally like when I have a kid I'm she's gonna be like or they or whoever they're gonna be like can I go out and I'm like absolutely not you're gonna sit here and I'm gonna stare at you so I know you're safe love that you know what I mean yeah yeah um for me, I and uh, you kind of inspired me too because I I could definitely say a lot, and at the same time I also am like I'm still learning so much, <laughs> obviously. Um, but one of the biggest things is something that I I talk to my brother about all the time. Um, so the advice that I would give myself, just because sometimes I feel like uh, something that was powerful to me always was hearing my own words or reading my own words, which is why journaling was always effective for me. So the advice that I would give myself was the same thing that he would say, which would be that my emotions are not a weakness. Yeah, I love that. I just always was like, I'm too sensitive. I'm too sensitive. Like, I just have too many emotions. My emotions have emotions, like, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and, and every feeling just felt so strong. And I just always discredited myself for that. I just always was like, I wish I didn't cry so easily. I wish I just, I wish I didn't feel so much of every emotion. Yeah. Um, but that's just so wrong. Like, it's just such a beautiful thing to be so in touch with, um, one's emotions. And, and that has been a lesson that I've had to, uh, unlearn and then embrace. Mm-hmm. So I would tell myself that tenfold um, so that I would stop crying about crying. We're both, Arasha and I are both cancer risings. So we, we have that, that water sign energy. Big deal. I want to say too a piece of advice that, um, that I, I wish to share with the audience. And I think that this could come off controversial, but it's my truth. So whatever. Okay. Um, but take this with a grain of salt. I will say, I've said this to you before, I think one of the most valuable things you can uh, live your life by is just saying, no one cares. And I mean that, of course, like at first that comes off a little like sour and a little like, but that's not how I mean it. I mean that like, whenever you look at something like in a scenario where you feel like you really embarrassed yourself or you didn't do as good of a job in a performance that you know you could have done better or you fought with your partner and like whatever, you can always step outside and be like, no one cares about that as much as you do. Even in like good scenarios, it's like you, um, you know, might get like a promotion at work and stuff and tell your friends and they're all really happy for you, but no one cares as much as you care. Mm. And I just think that that's like important to remind yourself that at your core, you are your biggest fan, you are your biggest critic, Mm -hmm. but no one is like thinking about you. Everyone's thinking about themselves. So next time you're like, oh God, like everyone's thinking about this. No one cares. No one cares. They're all thinking about themselves. They're all in their own world. Totally. You're in yours and you're entitled to that. Use that. Use that to cope uh, with any embarrassment that you might be feeling, any guilt. Like truly 
use that to move on, I think. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> totally. Um, all right. We found our way back. Yeah. Uh, we just needed the new dad to just help us bounce back up. Time has certainly flown, my friend. Well, I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys here at our spitball sleepover. Yes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our cozy vibe again. It's going to be back. Um, we're going to try to have a spitball sleepover um, ever so often. So you'll see this set um, back soon. Yeah. And we love talking with you guys. So always feel free to reach out to us and continue to come back and watch spitball. We love having you. Yes. And thank you for everybody who submitted. Um, hopefully you'll get featured on the next time as well. We will let you know what we need from you. And good luck to that dad i'm gonna go um find out what practical skill means yes see indeed. you next time bye bye hey thanks for hanging out with us we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of spitball if you want to keep up with us in between episodes or if you have any ideas on topics you'd like to hear us talk about make sure you follow us on instagram at the spitball podcast you can also subscribe to us on youtube and look out for us anywhere you listen to your podcasts we upload every monday see, see you next time, time.